what we're looking for. surrounded by weapons. I'm sorry, what? Weapons. Okay. He's a hunter. He's no, that, that's, that's fine. He went oh. into it. He was getting angry. So I'm not going to go over there by myself unless I have somebody with me. On January 21st, 2022, Lincoln County deputies made their way to one of the smallest towns known to the United States, Rachel, Nevada. Considered the UFO capital of the world, Rachel is most infamous for its close proximity to Area 51. But even more curious is the tiny population of only 45 people that live within its bounds. And now, we will get a chance to meet just a few, although the circumstances aren't quite ideal. Lawyer? Okay, that's fine. There's a copy of the search warrant. Okay, and there should also be a return of service attached to that. Uh, we'll fill that out once we get done and completed with the search warrant. Have you step out of the vehicle for me? I need you out of the vehicle because we are searching these premises and this vehicle is part of the search warrant. So you need to exit the vehicle per the search warrant. If you want to get out and get some of these guys here, I'll be more than happy to read and go over the search warrant with you guys. The sergeant is speaking with a woman named Tiffany who informs them that there are three other people on the property. And just as quickly, the officer is introduced to another resident. It's Michael, right? Yes, sir. We have a search warrant. No, they have a copy. Do you have the original? That I do. We're going to announce Sheriff's Office search warrant. Sheriff's Office search warrant. Anyone on the property, make yourself known. Wait, so how many more people are here? Three, right? Three, yeah. Three more besides you two? Yeah. Do you got no weapons on you, nothing like that? No, sir. Okay, do you mind just... Face away from you real quick. Okay. I'm just going to pat you down. Okay, make sure. You... I'm just making sure you don't got anything. Yeah, you're right. Terry Frisk is what it's called for the search. Okay. Stay here with us real quick. What's that? So we're not, we're, that's because we don't have any in this county, and we're not going to frisk you because I don't think you're going to, you know, pull a gun out and hurt me, are you? Are you going to cooperate and show us, show us around or no? I'm, I'm trying to be respectful for your guys' rights. Yeah, I mean, ain't gonna do nothing. I'm talking. I'm talking about the property. I mean, I technically, we can toss it with the warrant we've got, but I'm trying to be respectful for what you guys got. What do you want me to do? She wants you to record us, just and just oh. just so you know, they have body cameras back there, and then we both have our body cameras on as well. Please. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do, do you want me to go over this with you? I love you, Kay. Okay. Dear Father in heaven, please keep us all safe. Keep us all by the book. Be in our hearts. Amen. Amen. I agree 100%. So this this is just stating that Deputy Stewart over here, who's the one who's filling it out, he's stating that um, this is why we were called here at the, the time. This is saying that we, the judge, Noel Holton, signed it, that we have between 7 a.m., 7 p.m., within 10 days to serve it. It was signed within an hour, about two, what, an hour ago. Hour ago. He left Alamo and brought it out here. She searched what? To search all the property. We'll get into that, okay? What are you looking for? So we're looking for copper wire, transfer core, wire cutting tools, shoes, boots, vehicles, vehicle tire, tire mark from tire marks from what we have, but you're common to be out there, and any other fruits or instrument, instrumentalities has, of crime. I'm not trying to be difficult. No, what are you saying? Um, what professional has, I mean, there's got to be someone skilled. We don't, we don't have to have a professional here. We just believe that a prudent person would see those exact same tire marks, see them on the truck, uh -huh. and that brought us here to, to the home. Although the officer doesn't specify where, someone had reported a theft at a nearby location. Apparently, a transformer for one of their power poles had gone missing, but it would not take long to find it only half a mile down the dirt road. Attached was a rope used to pull the large object that was assumed to be hooked onto the end of a truck, given the fresh tire tracks at the scene. However, the rope had been broken off, when law enforcement recovered the transformer, the inside had been completely emptied and gutted of the copper and wires. Still, deputies found three sets of footprints around the power pole, prompting authorities to believe that it was more than just a one-man job. We have a copy and we have to clear the buildings. So, go ahead and go stand by those troopers. No, we do. The sergeant follows Tiffany to the marvel of the property, a building locally known as the Dome House. For now, he attempts to thoroughly explain the search warrant to Tiffany, even though she is hesitant to accept. Still, she finally complies. This is a pretty chaotic scenario, only made more chaotic by the disorganized nature of the scene. Some of the parties seem to have an understanding of their individual rights, such as remaining silent, 
but they appear to have very little understanding of how search warrants work. Generally, when an investigation leads to a search warrant, the affiant must show probable cause for the warrant to be issued, such as an officer's reasonable belief that a crime has occurred or is about to occur. An officer may establish probable cause with witness statements and other evidence, including hearsay evidence that would not be admissible at trial. It's important to note that a mere suspicion or belief by itself is not sufficient to establish probable cause. In this case, the initial investigation which led to the discovery of tire tracks, footprints, and a discarded transformer casing likely provided the basis of the reasonable suspicion. There may have been other facts and evidence in support of probable cause as well, but these specifics alone would likely have been enough. Next, the sergeant hops on a brief call with the district attorney, placing the phone on speaker so Tiffany is able to hear. He hopes to clear up any confusion that would delay their search even further. Unfortunately, we are not able to hear the private conversation because the sheriff's office made redactions to the footage. Should we go back up and, and discuss what the DA just talked about? The DA just filled your head with bull****. Okay, well, I have, I to, I have to honor... And I'll prove it in front of a judge. Okay, that's, that's fine. fine, and I have to honor and go with what Judge Noel Holton stated. Next, the officer meets Thorson Hensner and Tony, additional residents of the property. Despite their initial compliance, they may know more than they're initially letting on. However, it's important to note that all parties are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Real quick, I'm just gonna do yeah. deputies cannot arrest or give tickets. Correct. I must have a supervisor all on scene. You guys, you guys cooperate. Um, well, he is my supervisor, so I can write tickets if I need. Do you have a card? I do not have a card. Do you have a card? Yes, I do. Deputy cannot arrest or give tickets, can they? Well, yeah, well we can. It depends on what we locate during this. This supervisor has to be there. What's that? I'm sorry. Hey, Mom. Supervisor has to be there, right? Mom? No, that's incorrect. Thorson would like to know the exact intentions of the authorities, and the deputy responds by detailing what they will be searching for. And if you can't see it plain on his face, Thorson is growing irritated. Can I get a couple like, questions? Is that, like is that okay first, Tiffany? Oh, no, that's not what are your questions? Okay, so, so Sorry, I, I don't want to be crossing the road. Okay, well, I'm the one who filed for it, so I'm sure I can answer all the questions. It's your deputy. You can't serve Okay, whatever. Yes, I can. Okay, you can think that. We want to find a spot that you guys would like to stay. So we could go search that area first, make sure one, there's no weapons, and two, that there's no property of the crime. That's what we're looking for. surrounded by f***ing weapons. I'm sorry, what? Weapons. Okay. He's a hunter. He's no, that, that's, that's fine. Non-ambulatory. Cannot walk. Okay, but like I said, are you going to... Cannot walk. He's right behind you. We're right there on the hill. Cannot walk. Okay, that's fine. And so if we need to go in there and clear that and have these officers sit with you guys in that area, that's perfectly fine. I want to get you guys warm and as comfortable as we can while we do this. So She would not talk to you guys. She's mad. Post law enforcement. Thinks she knows everything. He's got the world by the ball. He went in the trailer there. He went uh, into it? He was getting angry. So I'm not going to go over there by myself unless I have somebody with me. Right. I don't know what your plans are, but... The sergeant approaches the dome house where Stan, Tiffany's husband, is waiting inside. However, it's the peculiar and chaotic setup of the home that will likely catch your attention. Oh, I'm sorry, Stan, I didn't see you sitting there. Stan, I'm Sergeant Walsh with Lane County Sheriff's Office based out of Alamo. I've got a copy of the warrant that I'm going to serve you with today, okay? I got what you were going to Oh, he is a little vicious. Would you like... Do you mind if I see that so we can read it together? And then I'll get this right back to you. The sergeant reads Stan his Miranda rights, along with the search warrant, before going into detail about the stolen transformer. The way that we traced it back to this location is where they gutted the transformer. No one had drove on that road because it was fresh tracks. And the tire tracks match the tire tracks that were coming into your property. And the shoe prints that were at the transformer around the tire tracks right. were also located. Nice shoe. I, have, I, have, I have pictures and I have... Well, cast, right? What's that? Shake a cast. We don't do casting anymore because digital pictures do so well. These cattle, they're the most glowing animal out there. They're the highest radiation carrier we've got. 
Hmm. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. I don't know much about that. I've got a bunch of other deputies out there waiting for me, or officers. Yes, sir. And I apologize. No, you're good. Like I said, I'd love to come visit with you afterwards, but can I get this done, and I'll come we back. And we, well, I can say we can come back here and shoot the breeze. So instead of having a bunch of guys come in here and search this, are you okay if I, because I've already explained the warrant, we have the right to be in here, I would just like to search real quick myself and then be done with this building. I would just like to be able to say, and I can put in the report, that we cleared the dome house. You know what I'm saying? Please try not to move there. I won't. And like I said, I'll be very respectful. The sergeant begins a thorough search of the mysterious house, only to find a cluster of objects unrelated to the crime. The residence appears to be just as cluttered on the inside as it is on the out, where something may just be hiding in plain sight. Kind of like you. Oh, yeah. Only thing I found was that boot I sent you and I don't think that matches didn't look like it which that's what she was wearing earlier today next the officers scour the exterior of the property where they find various trailers and rusty cars but eventually they turn the corner and make a shocking discovery yeah there you go is that what it is yeah because look at the oil yeah there it is we're like 90 percent 100% 100% sure that's a transformer, right? The inside of one? That is definitely one. And it has fresh oil. And the tire, the tire has oil on it on the outside of the right rear tire. Good, John. Go take pictures. Uh, All right, I'll go get my camera. Get your camera and do that. The officers appear to make the assumption that the alleged stolen interior of the transformer found on the road could most likely be used for this one. Urgently, the sergeant wants to speak with every person living on the Dome House property. It's clear that the officer believes they have some explaining to do. First, he starts with Michael, who's more than willing to give his side of the story. What's up, man? Okay, I'm going to read you your Miranda rights again, okay? You know your rights, you understand your rights. Do you have any questions about your rights? Okay. So I've got a bunch of questions for you. We've already talked about this. If you don't want to say anything, you have the right to refuse to talk to me, okay? Right. Going off your rights. What do you know about the transformer? Um, I just know it was in the middle of the road. Okay, from this morning? Yeah. You didn't see it last night or anything? Or no. you, did you guys got it? Oh. oh. Did you help unload it from that pickup truck? From the pickup truck? From that Ford no. Ranger? Oh. Okay. I've been sick. I've been down. So we have... Three sets of footprints, the oh. tire tracks, oil on the truck, transformer oil, okay, on the tires. We found the core of the transformer here on here on the property. Okay. Okay. So. Wait. You did? Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'm only guilty of saying it was in the middle of the road. Yeah. Well, is that a crime? No. No. But, like I said, I mean, if we find a set of shoes or whatever that belong to you, that we have at the scene of the, the scene of the incidences, because yeah. we have two scenes, right? We have where it was stolen and where it was recovered and where the core was stolen from. So if we find any shoes that belong to you at those, then, I mean, we're charging you full boat. Okay? Next, they briefly speak with Thorson, who pleads the fifth. The officers appear to find his silence to be rather suspicious. Hoping to put a match to one of the footprints found at the scene, the sergeant takes a picture of the bottom of Thorson's shoe. One more thing, I need to look at your bottom of your shoes. Yeah. Let me find a cell phone to snap a picture. Pull up your pictures. That's the Ninja Star one, yep. That's the squares. And then that's, see how it has that little Ninja Star in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the Ninja Stars pronounced right there, yeah. for sure. We located the transformer core on the back of the property. Someone also dug a hole that's the perfect size for it, but they never put it in the hole. And um, The footprints that were on the crime scene and at the place where the transformer was got is also actually the same boots that Thorson is wearing. As it turns out, Thorson's shoe appears to be a match to just one of the prints, but there are still two more to go, which leads us to the next suspect, Tony, who's been rather quiet throughout the bizarre ordeal. The deputy reads him his Miranda rights before taking a picture of the bottom of his shoe. Real quick, before I ask any questions, can I go ahead and get you to lift up your foot? Me? Yep. Either one. 
Real quick, just go ahead and hold that for me. Okay, well, so right right now you're just being detained. Okay, well then if, when, if, if, I, if and when I'm being arrested for something, then I understand my rights and I am right here. Okay. okay. All right, we are going to go ahead and go through your trailer now. Searching through the trailer, they don't find any incriminating evidence. Although, as the deputy compares the picture of Tony's shoe to that of one of the prints at the crime scene, he has found what he believes to be another match. Okay, so I already read your Miranda's. Um, you are being placed under arrest. We have enough evidence to put you at the crime and tie you to the evidence. So, go ahead and place your hands behind your back. Both Tony and Thorson are placed under arrest for their alleged involvement in the theft, but it's unclear if the two were charged or convicted. However, we are unable to learn if the officers were able to locate the third supposed accomplice, who may have slipped away unnoticed. 